Let us know when you're ready to go. Uh, yeah, so on the button here, I got the red dots at the store, right? Right. We're doing it. Cool. Okay. Just and you're rolling on that little, camera? Come in a little bit. Is that light, this light not helping you by sitting back that far? Right here? Uh, I'm trying to come over a little bit more this way. There you go. And you're looking. You guys are just, I think you're chatting together. Just right. Your audio is still in the Cool. All right. So we are good to go. Uh, go ahead, just tell us a little bit about yourself and who you are. All right, well, my name is uh, Russ Belville. On the air, I'm known as Radical Russ, and I'm the host of The Russ Belville Show, which is, uh, to my knowledge, the world's only live daily talk radio program by, for, and about the cannabis community. Okay, cool. Go ahead and tell us a little bit about, about your show, like the history of your show, and what it is that you like to do on your program. Well, I, I began this uh, in podcasting. I worked for Normal, the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws, and uh, took over their podcast, which was called The Daily Audio Stash. And it was a daily 30 to 45 minute podcast of the news and interviews with politicians and, and activists and so forth. Uh, my background was in live talk radio. I had come to normal after winning a nationwide talk radio star search contest basically and I had a show on uh, XM satellite for a couple of years the Russ Belville show there which was uh, political talk so the recorded podcasting format uh, I didn't find it suited me well so I transformed the show into being a live show uh, using some of the technologies available now like Ustream and Stick'em and so forth uh, made it a live show expanded it to an hour uh, gave up more of a, a talk radio format where you know there's structured segments of news and music and interviews and opinion and uh, just this year expanded it to two hours so that the second hour uh, could take advantage of live call-ins and, and live chat questions so uh, I did that with normal up and up through May uh, in May left normal to take this uh, independent and start to build our own sort of cannabis media network and now I'm, I'm doing this independently at RadicalRust.com. All right, awesome. Can so I what is it? Break here for a second? Yeah, sure. This will help our light a little better. Next question is going to be pretty simple. It's just like, you know, what are you doing here? Um, tell us a little bit about, you know, some of your work with Normal. Why do you feel like this? Um, basically, like, why are you here? Okay. What is it that you're doing with the campaign? Right. And then sure. what Thank brought you from all the way from Oregon? So go ahead, just tell us a little bit then. Why is it that you're here, really? Well, you know, being uh, news media for the cannabis community, you've got to cover the cannabis community events. And, of course, the High Times Cannabis Cup that everyone knows from Amsterdam is a very strong part of this community. It's been going on for over two decades now. Uh, over the past two or three years, they've now had uh, medical cannabis cups in San Francisco, Los Angeles, uh, Denver, Detroit. And being that I'm based in Portland, Oregon, and this is the first one in the Pacific Northwest, uh, it's a news event. So, you know... It, this is something that we have to cover as the Russ Belldale show is that this is where the cannabis community is. This is where th they had a, a panel discussion on the 502 legalization yesterday. They're going to have a panel discussion today on the, uh, the hash oil concentrates that are becoming so popular. This is where new ha news happens. And you don't see CNN here. You don't see you know Fox News or ABC News here. Somebody's got to cover this and cover this in a responsible way. And that's what I hope to be doing here. Amen. So let's talk a little bit then about the I-502 debate. Um, I know that there's something pretty similar to Oregon that's going on right now, but it's not getting as much popularity as I-502 is. Yeah. Do you want to go ahead and just kind of tell us a little bit about the bill there and the environment that's in surrounding that bill? Sure. You know, we've got a historic opportunity here in 2012. It's the first time in 42 years of drug war that three states simultaneously are voting on the marijuana issue. In 2006, there were two states that were voting on marijuana legalization. In the 42 years, there's been eight times it's been on the ballot in states that can put it on the ballot, and it's failed each time, the most recent being Prop 19 in 2010 with 46.5% of the vote. The situation, though, is an interesting one in that looking at the three initiatives is almost like the story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. In Oregon, we have an initiative that is very, very liberal with respect to uh, treat how we're going to treat marijuana. It defines uh, personal cultivation and personal possession without any prescribed limits. Uh, the, 
the other two states, Washington and Colorado, have uh, prescribed a one ounce limit to define personal possessions. Oregon's is completely without definition and limit. It also goes the, the furthest in defining hemp industry, cannabis cultivation industry, tying it in with state licensing and a commission, uh, tying it in with uh, educational, you know, bringing in money for education for the general fund. So on the one side, you've got Oregon's, which is, you know, in the Goldilocks analogy, I guess the, the Papa Bear one. Uh, in Washington, you've got the one that might be the strictest in that it doesn't allow home cultivation for personal use. It, it restricts you to one ounce and most controversially has this per se DUID provision that so many people are upset about here in Washington State. Maybe that's the mama bear of the legalizations. And then in Colorado, you got one that maybe is in between or just right. It allows personal cultivation. It caps the limit at one ounce, doesn't have a DUI provision. Now that's the, that's the way we look at it from a cannabis community. The way it's being looked at from a political standpoint, the Washington and Colorado measures have gotten a lot of funding, seven figures worth. Uh, Washington's raised over $3 million. I believe Colorado's now around a million and a half. And Oregon, unfortunately, is you know behind uh, in this. It's actually running deficits in its campaign. So while it may have the most friendly initiative for the cannabis community, as far as getting it passed, it's gotten the lowest polling and the least amount of funding. Now we aim to change that. There are people working in Oregon right now uh, to, to build up the fundraising and do a you know a, a shock campaign you know, on the ground, do it real quick here as we're getting in the final sprint of this campaign. But as far as the situation goes in Oregon, far more dire than what we're seeing in Washington or Colorado politically. Okay. I was just talking to one of your the people that you work with here talking about some of the things that are surrounding that and how hard it is for the people there to get funding for it and yeah. how you know a lot of the stuff that's going on here um do you think that something kind of like along the lines of i-502 you said is the strictest one that you've seen so far right do you think something like that would be able to fly in oregon if that was down there if i'll tell you if i succeed? could if i could wave a magic wand and trade initiatives i would mm -hmm. if i could also trade the campaign funding and the support uh the people up here in washington the, uh, the activists community that's against 502, I think what we've got in Oregon is the initiative they would want. Uh, I would gladly take 502 and try to pass that in Oregon because what we've seen in the polling is that they learned from what happened with Prop 19. With Prop 19, the post, uh, the post vote polling showed that what turned people from being kind of soft, what we call soft yeses, you know, kind of support the measure into <coughs> changing their vote into a no was fear of stone drivers, fear of there being a problem on the road with marijuana users, also fears that it would increase access by children. So based on those polling results, Washington's measure, the 502 campaign, New Approach Washington, decided to craft a measure that would preempt those kind of attacks. Can't attack us on the stone drivers, we're setting a strict stone driver limit. Can't attack us on the children thing, we're setting zero tolerance on the children. Now, of course, opponents are painting that as opportunistic or you know, ends justify the means people on the pro 502 side see that as pragmatism and you've got to get a legalization that passes or it really doesn't matter what you think mm -hmm. and the polling now is starting to show that when we've seen the most recent poll for i-502 it's got 57 percent support and usually when we see polling and they break it down between men and women the there's a gender gap anywhere between six and ten points where men really support legalization and women not so much with i-502 what we've seen no gender gap. 58% support among men, 57% support among women. So the calculation that we need to appease the soccer moms, as some opponents have said, seems to have worked. They seem to be appeased. Also, where we see a gap in polling and legalization is usually what we call the saddle, which is in the younger demographics, 18 to 34, let's say, there's great support. And in the older demographics, after age 45 or so, when the kids have flown the nest and now they're getting toward retirement, we see support. But that child rearing age in the middle is where we see a great drop in support, where people are thinking, I may have smoked pot when I was young, but I don't want my kids to do it, and they're afraid of legalization. Similarly, with the polls with 502, we have seen that uh, actually where there's more support among that middle demographic than there is among the younger demographic. So it seems to me the polling was smart and this smart polling may just get legalization passed in Washington State. 
Do you feel like it is a legalization, though, is the appropriate term? Because I've heard a lot of convincing arguments um, from all of these debates that I've seen, you know, this isn't going to be considered legal until there's no limit to how much you can carry and where you can smoke it and everything like that's, that. That's, that I think is an excellent point. Yeah, that's, that's, that's something I've heard from many people. This isn't true legalization. This isn't real legalization. And I always like to point out that legalization is a process. Mm -hmm. That's why it has the suffix shun on the end of it. There is a process that takes us. What they are confusing is legalization with freedom. And I agree, freedom means we can grow as much as we want, have as much as we want, sell it to who we want, you know, and, and, and it's treated freely. The process of getting to freedom is legalization, and that takes a series of steps. And one of the analogies I've made is that if it's late at night, let's say it's one in the morning, I'm watching TV, I'm smoking a joint, there's a knock on my door and there's a cop there. If I answer the door with the joint in my lips, and after our conversation the cop goes away without taking me in handcuffs, it's legal. That's as legal as I need it to be to start with. And the other thing is, you've got to have some right before you can fight for all your rights. Right now, we are all criminals fighting for the right to get high. The minute we legalize one ounce of possession, we are now consumers fighting to expand our rights beyond one ounce. And that's why I think it's important to take the step, and believe me, I hate per se DUIDs. I've fought them in Colorado, I've fought them in every state they've been enacted. But to me, it's not a deal breaker in ending prohibition. Excellent. Is there anything else that you'd like to say? Just tune in to the Russ Belville Show weekdays, uh, 1 p.m. Pacific time on RadicalRust.com and replays every three hours. So if you miss it early, you can catch it late. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank and, you. I, you know, I wanted to talk to you guys because you're filming this. Oh. So um, <clears throat> that was the photo button, not the end record button. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now I'm thinking um, we interviewed you. We're probably going to use this for our preview. And we're probably going to definitely use a lot of that for our movie. Okay. I was hoping you could interview me as to yes. what the project is, and then we could put that on your show sometime. Okay, and just let me make sure you get your name right. Sure thing. And then I hope you don't mind us recording that as well. Not at all. Excellent. We'd be, we'd be happy to give you a copy of that if you wanted to put. Yeah, just email me because I'll, I'll do it. A, I'll do a split. You know, well, I'll put the footage together and we'll split it. And I'm recording that high def too, so if you want to use oh, the video cool. from Either it. Either way you want to use it, but I mean, we'd love okay. to... Go ahead. Uh, Joseph Wilkie, J-O-S-E-F. No, J-O-S-E-F, W-I-L-K-E. -E. Good job on getting the E, by the way. Absolutely nobody got that. J-O-S-E-F. Oh, yeah. with a, not a P-H. Okay, nope. so, so like Russian spelling almost. Uh, more like um, Scandinavian, not Scandinavian. Scandinavian. Uh, and Western the, Europe. And the project is? The project is called Local Voices I-502. Which you can look up on Kickstarter. I just want you to know that all of these t-shirts are going up on the screen. Good. So that's what I do with them, too. <laughs> they no good sitting in my camera. All right. All right, so see ya. All right, okay. ready? Yeah, all good? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, so I just kind of wanted to uh, touch base with you. I was actually just about to send you a call. I just came here to roll in here. Okay. Uh, wedding. Welcome back, everybody, to the Russ Belvel Show, coming to you live from the High Times Medical Cannabis Cup in Seattle, Washington, 2012. We're sitting here with Joseph Wilkie. He's uh, behind a project called Local Voices I-502, basically uh, documenting this I-502, uh, I guess, not scandal, but uh, uh, controversy. More the controversy, we really feel that we're kind of the only media outlet right now that's trying to get the controversy on tape. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of media outlets kind of are ignoring some of the issues that are going by. They want to present it as the best chance that we have for legalizing weed. And though they may be correct on that, they're not really covering why some of the people are upset about it. Because when you look at it, the base is absolutely split. Mm -hmm. well, we went to Hempfest and we were interviewing just people on the street there as to how they felt about the initiative. And so the people who were really paid to be there, you know, they were all for I-502. Some of the other people that were there also were really, you know, all for this. But when you interviewed citizens of Washington, and when you interviewed people who were there at Hempfest, it was an overwhelming no. Yeah. They really were concerned about these per se DUI laws. They were really concerned, you know, it isn't exactly what they wanted. They were worried that this was just kind of entrapment, like they were going to get trapped into being arrested if they were passing this law. <coughs> well, we, haven't, we haven't gotten to a, a, um, a consensus here as to what the people feel like, but basically we're uh, trying to get all sides of it right now. 
Now, producing this thing, of course, independent media, we know how tough it is raising funds. You've got a Kickstarter going right now. So exactly. before we get too deep into this, tell people how they can help out. I mean, if you want to see an, you know, a, a factual kind of unbiased look at this controversy, help this guy out. Tell him, Joseph. The best way to help us out right now is to look up Local Voices I-502 on Kickstarter.com. You can go ahead and pledge a level of support. We have prizes for the more money that you give. And then we also ask that after you support some money and give us with that, you can also send the link to about a few of your friends or post it on Facebook so all your friends can see it. All right. So as, as you're interviewing people and finding uh, the, the differences in the community, you say Seattle Hemp Fest, the community was split and so forth. Um, how did this happen? How, how did you see this affecting people on a personal level? Because I know personally myself, I have some very, very good friends, longtime friends in the movement, Doug Hyatt, Jeff Steinborn, for example, that we are diametrically opposed on this issue, but yet we're finding a way to reach beyond that and realize that we'll have to work together in two months afterwards anyway. Uh, tell us some of the personal stories. Did you find people that were really personally taken down by this? I, just yesterday, actually, during the debate that we were filming, and we saw how one of the panel members up there, the two of them were friends, but they were split on the issue. And so we saw a lot of people trying to really watch what they were saying in this debate to make sure they didn't hurt the other one's feelings or anything like that. Uh, I forget the gentleman's name, the older man who was up there. Jeff Steinberg. Jeff Steinberg. Jeff was very, um, he was very polite. He was trying his hardest to really, you know, <laughs> watch what he was saying to make sure that he didn't hurt the feelings of the woman who was up there as well because they were friends. Allison. It was very obvious that they were very split on this issue, even though they'd worked together the whole time on this to make sure that it was legalization. So it's very interesting to see how that split. It's also very interesting to see just the other people that are around here. Like we were talking to people who work at a uh, medical cannabis, uh, the, the distribution areas for this. Okay. How split they are on this. People like co-workers uh, kind of disagree on this. There's some people who are in my crew who are split on this. So it's definitely affecting everybody who's around the area. Wow, it's amazing. And so and and finding people that uh, have worked for, you know, so in some cases decades, fighting for ending this prohibition. Uh, it seems to me that there is a there's a cultural aspect to what we do in that we have been oppressed by the man for so long that when something comes along that is seemingly popular with the man, we're distrustful. Did you find that maybe a part of this was a distrust of the authority figures like the John McKay's and some of the police people that are endorsing this? There's a level of distrust in just about everything that gets passed, really. Um, a lot of the bills that have been passed recently are kind of, I feel in a sense, are how is this going to screw me over the most as soon as it comes. So there's a lot of that. There's also a little bit of bitterness that comes with it. <coughs> Excuse me. But I think it's more of just, it's not, I don't want to say distrust of the bill that much. It's more just a split of how is this going to affect me immediately, how is this going to affect me in the long run. Mm -hmm. And it's also um, more or less along the lines of is this everything that I really want to be in this bill. It's kind of like you were saying earlier as to how you would switch the bills that were in Oregon right now, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I would. I'd, yeah, I'd gladly take 57. And so yeah. there's definitely some people here who kind of feel the exact same way as, you know, Oregon's got something going on with them. I kind of like the way that that's worded and that's presented here. There's people in Washington, obviously, who are all for this bill who are thinking, you know, this is great. This is definitely a step in the right direction. And then there's people, obviously, who just don't want marijuana to be legal whatsoever. But cares about them, cares right? what they think. Exactly. They, they don't know what they're talking about. Uh, we're speaking here with uh, Joseph Wilkie. He's behind the project Local Voices I-502, kind of a documentary on both sides, what's going on here. Not necessarily the, the bill itself, but the people involved mm -hmm. and how this is affecting the, the community. they got a Kickstarter project going on for this. Check out Local Voices I-502. When you were uh, interviewing people on either side, pro or, or con to I-502, how much did you find Washington's very burgeoning medical industry and community affecting people's views, or did they? I've met a lot of people who were more concerned about medical users than they were about their own personal use. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there were so many people out there who are like, yeah, you know, there's a great chance I could get arrested, but I'm more worried about somebody who's a medical user who has to smoke pot to either get over the pain that they're feeling because of the treatment that they're in, or, you know, any purpose that they have, and then they go out to drive the next day, and the next day they get pulled over, and they're still having, you know, those active THC levels being too high to drive. And so a lot of people are out here are more worried about medical users than they are their own personal selves, which I thought was very, you know, heartening and very, you know, a lot of honor was going into that. All right. So uh, any last words as far as the, the project goes or anything else to tell the people? To kind of follow up on what you were saying earlier, this isn't a see both sides of the issue. This issue, I feel like, has eight sides to it. <laughs> yeah, and we want to yeah. get all eight sides on camera. We're going to interview everybody about this to present it to itself to it. 
And we also are going to be following, you know, we're going to follow the campaign a month before the election and a month after. Because a uh, great quote yesterday is there's going to be a November 7th. That's right. And so we're going to be following from November 7th to uh, the month after that as well. And we really want everybody to see, you know, this is going to be a great presentation to see if this passes, right? Mm -hmm. Other states can see this and go, this is how we should form our bill. This can be successful. We also want to document the fact that the world isn't going to end as soon as we get a <laughs> marijuana reform bill passed. Yeah. I think that's the most important part as well. But... Um, it's also just going to give a clear voice to the people who live here who either are all for this bill or against it. This isn't just some piece that's going to present the bill in some glorious way. It's going to say this is the greatest thing to ever happen to marijuana reform and only follow the people that are involved. This is a bill or this is a movie that is by the citizens for the citizens. All right. Well, Joseph Wilkie, local voices, I-502. Check it out on Kickstarter. And thanks for joining us on the Russ Bell sure thing. Show. Thanks Appreciate a lot for having me. Take care. Gotcha. All right, when, uh, when we come back here, what I'm going to do, uh, we've been speaking about this I-502, and yesterday there was a debate or a panel on 502. I've got it on video. We're going to put it up here on the video screen. It does run about an hour and a half, so we'll just let it run, and you can uh, decide for yourself. Thanks for joining us here at the High Times Medical Cannabis Cup. All right, thanks a lot, Russ.